Many uniquely memorable and or eccentric personalities mingled with the early Indiana-Ohio country settlers on the northern branches of the Ohio River. One of them, Louis Wetzel, was in the Marietta area in 1788, serving as a part-time scout at Fort Harmar and as a hunter to supply wild game for the new settlement. 1789, according to some accounts, he shot a Seneca chief named Tagunte. The chief, nicknamed George Washington because he was publicly regarded as an exemplary character, had been approaching the fort for treaty negotiations overseen by General Josiah Harmar. Wetzel left the Ohio Valley area then. It is reported he did jail time for counterfeiting, romanced a Spanish official's wife, and joined the Lewis and Clark expedition. The latter two activities were not documented, however. He was a loner, living for long periods by himself in the woods and sometimes in rocky hideouts. One such location is in present-day Lancaster, Ohio. Another was near Moss Run in Washington County. When not in the woods, he played the fiddle in taverns and excelled in shooting competitions. Wetzel was described as being friendly to dogs and children, but often aloof with adults. He never had a home, married, owned land, or held an ordinary job. Wetzel was renowned for the ability to reload, prime, and shoot his musket while running at full speed. He was also an expert using Indian tricks, such as imitating the turkey call to lure soon-to-be-scalped native hunters. His appearance was distinctive too. He was described as about six feet tall, raw boned, with a swarthy appearance, jet black eyes, pockmarked face from smallpox, braided hair which reached to his calves when he combed out, and pierced ears from which he wore silk tassels. Some said he had the skin color of Indians. His dark side was the obsession with hunting and killing Indians quote, often for sport, quote, stalking them like prey, some acquaintances said. He often tracked small hunting parties for long periods, then attacked, killing them, taking scalps, and fighting his way out if there were survivors. Lewis claimed that he had scalps of 27 Indians that he killed between 1777 and 1788, other sources put the figure at a hundred or more. Wetzel, reportedly by himself, won $100 bounty for successfully scalping a native believed to be stalking the community of Wheeling.
Historian Ray Zwick reported a surprising recent discovery about Wetzel in an article authored with Brian Hardison. Hardison obtained a document at auction in 2007 which lists Lewis Wetzel as a participant in the ill-fated Aaron Burr expedition that originated on Blennerhassett Island. There are no details on his role, however. Excerpts from the following poem of Flopas Pimpton, I believe, simply and matter-of-factly, convey the spirit of a lonely frontier woodsman pioneer, a post-revolution man of stealth and self-sufficiency, sharing a dimming and dying forest with restless natives and a rapidly growing settler community in the Ohio-Mississippi River basins. Stout-hearted Lewis Wetzel rides down the river shore, the wilderness behind him, the wilderness before. He needs no guide in the forest, more than the honey bees. His guides are the cool green mosses to the northward of the trees. Nor fears him the foe whose footstep is light as the summer air. His tomahawk hangs in his shirt belt. The scalp knife glitters there. The stealthy Wyandots tremble and speak his name with fear, for his aim is sharp and deadly, and his rifle's ring is clear. The wild bird seems to say, Do not harm us, good Lewis, and you shall have luck today. Now take this rod of elder, set it by yonder tree, a hundred yards beyond me, and wait you there and see. So the stranger takes the alder, and wandering stands in view, while Wetzel's aim grows steady and he cuts the rod in two. My heavens, exclaims the stranger, one only far and nigh half arms like the lithe young ash tree, or half so keen an eye, and that is Lewis Wetzel. Quoth Lewis, here he stands. So they speak in gentle manner and clasp their friendly hands right out of the leafy greenwood as rises the yellow moon and the purple hills lie pleasantly in the softened air of June. Poem by Flohus Pimpton <laughs>